Hi guys, happy Monday. What a crazy week it's been. I hope you guys are all doing really, really well. As you know, if you looked at our community board on the video that we posted on Wednesday, halfway through filming the video, our lights blew. It wasn't just our lights, it was the adapter that blew as well. I really wish I had saved that video of it blowing because it was it scared the crap out of me. It sounded like a gun going off, but um, we do have all of our new equipment in. We're just trying to get it set up to work. So hopefully by Wednesday, we should have all the lights up and running again. I have a lot of stories raring to go for all of you that are already scripted. I just, of course, needed to get the lights set up. So I really thank you all for being very patient. For the time being, one of our awesome community members here, Adam, submitted a recording of an interesting conversation he had in Hawaii with some legends that um, resemble a lot of the stuff we've talked about here on this channel. So even though on Mondays we usually do a Monday mystery, because of our situation with the lights, I'm super grateful to Adam for sending this over so you guys can hear this pretty cool recording for yourselves. So without further ado, welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce. Today on this very interesting Monday, we are gonna be hearing from the awesome Adam about his experiences in Hawaii. Adam lives in Poland. He is fluent in English as his maternal grandfather was an American. Polish and English are his mother tongues, but he speaks several other languages, German and Russian among them. Adam has been fascinated by the unexplained since he can remember. The passion which wasn't always well received by all. He traveled to Hawaii in 2011 where he got a chance to interview a local tour guide. The guy told him an intriguing story about the little people and other entities supposedly living in Hawaii. Adam is a linguist and an avid writer. He is fascinated by the ideas of an infinite number of realities ex existing concurrently with our own. Adam is an author of the novel of Alternative Realities, Planetary Entrapment Syndrome, Escaping Hazmat Demons, where he mixes dark comedy with existential questions. Given the age of lockdowns we're in, the theme fits perfectly. A fan of the middle ground, he is a pragmatist who enjoys a stimulating conversation about abstract ideas every now and then. An optimist with a cynical touch, he hopes to see his novel in print one day. Adam worked in China in 2016, around 600 miles from Wuhan. He's never visited Wuhan. Now, as always, I always include a snippet from Adam's novel down in the description box below. So if you want to read it, go ahead and read it. Um, if you know anybody who is in publishing or can help Adam get his novel printed, his email address is also listed down below. So go ahead and reach out to him. So the Menehune are little people who live in Hawaii. Now, for those who are familiar with our work on this channel, you know, we have talked extensively about little people and giants. I will include some of those past videos in the description box below as well. What I find so interesting about the recording you're about to hear from Adam is that this legend seems to be very much alive and well in Hawaii to this day. In fact, there's a lot of interesting information in this recording that Adam sent me. And if you guys want, I can go deeper into research into some of these topics that this tour guide speaks to Adam about. Just let me know. So without further ado, here is Adam's recording. An area that the Eapas were quite frequently seen. Um, 
Menahunes, they, they mainly started off on Molokai, but then they also had a big group of them that was once on Kauai. Now, legend has it that most of the Menahunes went back to their sacred homelands because what happens was the king of the Menahunes was upset because many of the Men Menahunes were fraternizing with humans, which is wow. not supposed to happen. Now, Menahunes are like very much like elves. They were said to build many of the fish ponds, some of the roads very quickly overnight, very magical. Um, Did they live underground? Or? <laughs> Uh, you know, it was not very clear, but they were mostly very active at night. Okay. Um, Hawaii long ago was said to have been uh, once part of a place, I believe it was either Mu or Lemura, I'm not sure, but anyway. So many, many legends of uh, this, this right. long, yeah. long ago. Some scholars have said though that, oh no, no, the Menehunes were actually what is called the um, Marquesans, because the first um, indigenous Hawaiian people came from the Marquesa Islands and they were about five feet tall. Oh, but yeah. the later group of Hawaiians that came and took over were between six and a half and seven feet. So the Marquesans were chased into the mountains and they were seen as like the little tiny people. But many Hawaiian people said, no, that's not who they were. So again, there's a lot of dispute, yeah. Right. But even still to this day, there was a story not long ago, maybe in the 1970s or 80s, there was a school that had to, they called in the police and the fire department and all these guys because children were seeing Menehune running around the school. So they called in these, you know, the fire department and everybody and they were all searching underneath there and looking around. Where was that? Here in Here in Oahu, yeah. I don't know exactly, exactly what particular school. Wow. I've heard a few other Menehune stories throughout, mm -hmm. yeah. So they're like goblins, right? The well, but Menahunis are more mischievous. The Eapas the are more like goblins. But then there's another group of entities that are shapeshifters called kupuas. Shapeshifters are sometimes equivalent in, in many respects to, um, you know, like genies. Yes, genies yes. Sort of like in that shapeshifting state. Um, some people can even equate them to being like incubus, succubus, stuff like right. that too, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, many, many cultures have similarities. Yeah. <coughs> so, is there a hollow earth, I mean, like, you know, in the Hawaii? This, this well, legend? I've heard, not directly from Hawaiian legend, but I've heard from... The well, Hawaiian legend talks about, um, of course, the underworld, but Hawaiian legend also has all these other things that I've not been able to research. But I also heard from other sources that... Mm -hmm. um, Underneath the Hawaiian Islands, I don't know if it was Pearl Harbor or some of the other islands too, but there's UFO bases around too. Right. Uh, I had a lady one night that she said she was, she works with the federal government on these secret projects and she, you know, was psychic in all these ways and she knew about all this stuff. But what freaked me out about the, this lady, because you know, sometimes you have people that are like that are just kind of way of course, out there. And, of course. You know, yeah. but this lady showed me a picture and here in Hawaii, there's a well-known entity known as the Mo'ovahine, which is, uh -huh. if you look in the history of mankind's old cultures, they talk about dragon entities, yes. dragon reptilians. reptilians. Well, she said the Mo'ovahine, which is a well-known entity, yeah. she went out to Mokulea, and everybody knows there is a Mo'ovahine uh, out in Mokulea. She said that she knew of this Mo'ovahine for a very long time, and she asked the Mo'ovahine, is it okay if I take her picture? And the Mo'ovahine said, yeah. She showed me the picture. She shows me the picture of a lady, beautiful lady, but scales all over her face and even in her eyes. So wow. either she had a, the greatest Photoshop type of program or she was real, a real, so I don't know. But anyway. It's amazing. Yeah, it yeah. is quite amazing when you open yourself up to the possibilities, yeah? And of course. The second Morgan's point mm -hmm. is where the... Uh, 